Introduction of Tools and Techniques Tools are generally a means of accomplishing change. The seven quality tools were first emphasized by Ishikawa in the 1960s, who is one of the quality management gurus. Continuous improvement could not be realized without quality tools, which are presented through four group of activities of Deming's quality cycle or PDCA cycle. Tools and techniques which can be used to complete each stage of the PDCA cycle. Plan for changes to bring about improvement. Do changes on a small scale first to trial them. Act to get the greatest benefit from changes. Check to see if changes are working and to investigate selected processes. Let's have a view of the e-lecture and video lecture which will make you understand the concept of tools and techniques of PDCA. Rekha has joined Dr. Irwin's clinic recently. She got confused after seeing that the large number of patients are being referred to specialists at local tertiary care center. After studying the previous referrals, it is clear that approximately 70% of the patients are being referred to the orthopedics department at the local tertiary care center mostly for sprained ankles and knee trauma. There are opportunities for improvement here. Let's apply PDC cycle to solve the problem. Okay, doctor. Let's give training to our four physicians on how to treat sprained ankles and knee trauma cases. Oh, that will be good. We have arranged one week training session for our four physicians in the two areas of high volume injuries. It's nice to see that the number of orthopedic referrals have reduced by 30% as compared with the same period in the previous years by staying open longer, treating more patients and referring less patients to other care center. The profit is 18% higher now. Yes, doctor. This change has resulted in major improvement in the entire process of patient care. We will now institute this change permanently. The resilience of PDCA for practice at any level or magnitude has contributed to its development as one of the most popular and evergreen process improvement methodologies, which has been seen in the entire process of patient care at Dr. Arvind's clinic. Plan, Do, Check, Act PDCA Introduction The PDCA cycle is used to coordinate continuous improvement efforts. It emphasizes and demonstrates that improvement programs must start with careful planning, must result in effective action, and must move on again to careful planning in a continuous cycle. The Deming's quality cycle is never ending. It is a strategy used to achieve breakthrough improvements in safety, quality, morale, delivery cost, and other critical business objectives. The completion of one cycle continues with the beginning of the next. A PDCA cycle consists of four consecutive steps or phases. When process improvement starts with careful planning, it results in corrective and preventive actions supported by appropriate quality assurance tools which lead to true process improvement. Most of the seven QC tools can be used for problem identification like flow chart, cause and effect diagram, check sheet, Pareto diagram, histogram and control charts. For problem analysis, cause and effect diagram, check sheet, Pareto diagram, scatter plot and control charts are used. When a team is developing a solution for the analyzed problem, flow chart and scatter plot can be useful as well. For effective and successful teamwork in solving daily quality problems, we propose a simple model for systematic usage of basic quality tools for process monitoring, data acquisition and quality improvement. PDCA tools Once the basic problem solving or quality improvement process is understood, the addition of quality tools can make the process proceed more quickly and systematically. According to Ishikawa, 95% of quality-related problems can be resolved with these basic tools. Cause and Effect Diagram This is also referred as Ishikawa Diagram or Fishbone Diagram. 
The diagram identifies many possible causes for an effect or problem. The common categories in a fishbone diagram are the M's, the P's, the S. Following is the example of Ishikawa diagram or fishbone diagram. Non-productive time in OT. Let's have a view of the e-lecture and video lecture which will summarize the tools and techniques of PDCA with more helpful resources. The hospital management is worried about the problem of long waiting hours experienced by the patients every day. To find the cause of long waiting times for outpatient appointments, we need to use fishbone analysis tool. Yes, we have to find the solution as soon as possible. Team, how things are going? So, it is found that patients don't keep appointment time and also there are limited staff in the clinic, poor maintenance and we have found difficulty in finding wheelchairs. Small waiting room, poor scheduling of appointments are also the major causes of the issue. After analysis, I think the requirement for patient notes tracking system and moving the OPD section to a near location with more space will help. What have you decided on the issue? Our action plan includes increasing the number of clinic rooms, drawing up a spaghetti diagram to understand department flow inefficiencies, discussing arrival times with patient transport and processing a map of how patient files are pulled and prepared for clinic. Fishbone analysis provided a template to separate and categorize possible causes of problem by allowing teams to focus on the content of the problem rather than the history. Cause and effect diagram. A cause and effect diagram is a tool that helps identify, sort and display possible causes of a specific problem or quality characteristic. It graphically illustrates the relationship between a given outcome and all the factors that influence the outcome. This type of diagram is sometimes called an Ishikawa diagram because it was invented by Kaoru Ishikawa or a fishbone diagram because of the way it looks. When you develop a cause and effect diagram, you are constructing a structured pictorial display of a list of causes organized to show their relationship to a specific effect. Constructing a cause and effect diagram can help to identify the possible root causes, the basic reasons for a specific effect, problem or condition. Sort out and relate some of the interactions among the factors affecting a particular process or effect. Analyze existing problems so that corrective action can be taken. The structure provided by the diagram helps team members think in a very systematic way. Some of the benefits of constructing a cause and effect diagram are that it helps determine the root causes of a problem or quality characteristics using a structured approach, encourages group participation and utilizes group knowledge of the process. Uses an orderly, easy-to-read format to diagram cause and effect relationships. Indicates possible causes of variation in a process. Increases knowledge of the process by helping everyone to learn more about the factors at work and how to relate. Identifies the areas where data should be collected for further study. Let's discuss the diagnostic errors with respect to fishbone diagram. Diagnostic errors comprise a critical subset of medical errors and often stem from errors in individual cognition. While traditional patient safety methods for dissecting medical errors focus on faulty systems, such methods are often less useful in the cases of diagnostic error and a broader cognitive framework is needed to ensure a comprehensive analysis of these complex events. The fishbone diagram is a widely utilized patient safety tool that helps to facilitate root cause analysis discussion. Along with improvements in the safety of healthcare systems, 
there has emerged an increasing appreciation of the importance of diagnostic error in causing patient harm. Studies suggest an overall diagnostic error rate as high as 8% to 15% with 17% of adverse events in hospitalized patients being attributable to diagnostic error. Yet, despite the high prevalence and increasing profile of diagnostic errors, the best means of preventing and responding to them remains unknown. There is a need among both medical educators and patient safety experts for a structured approach to the analysis of diagnostic errors that accounts for their high degree of complexity. The fishbone diagram is one tool that shows potential for this. Fishbone diagrams are now widely utilized as a patient safety tool to structure RCA of systems errors in hospitals and other healthcare settings. These diagrams facilitate the dissection of complex medical errors into discrete categories. Pareto chart Pareto chart is used to identify the vital few problems or causes of problems that have the greatest impact. This is also known as 80 by 20 rule. The Pareto chart is a bar chart named after Italian economist Wilfredo Pareto. The lengths of the bars represent frequency or cost or time or money and are arranged with longest bars on the left and the shortest to the right. In this way, the chart visually depicts which situations are more significant. Following is the example of Pareto chart showing causes for medication not delivered on time. Let's have a view of the e-lecture and video lecture which will give you more information about Pareto chart. I have received 845 complaint forms filled by the medical service beneficiaries. I am planning to identify the causes of problems that have the greatest impact. I think Pareto chart will help me in identifying this. Ok ma'am. I have grouped the complaints in categories. Now I am going to calculate the relative frequency and cumulative percentage of the obtained data. Let's see how it appears in the graph. Ok, carry on. This graph clearly shows almost two-thirds of the complaints, that is 68%, are caused by the solving time and information provided. It would be more useful that the improvement focuses on the first two causes, that is few and vital rather than on the low incidences ones, many and trivial. Okay ma'am. Pareto chart clearly helped to identify the issues that need to be addressed for optimal results.